Welcome to another video in our CatPat Phase 1 series where we're looking at how we can do our Phase 1 report document. If you watched our previous videos, you should have done your folder structure, you should have created your Phase 1 report document, filled in your task definition and focus question. Then I recommend that you've gone and done your research already for your 10 questions. So if you're watching this video, hopefully you've already done the research so you've got an idea of what your 10 questions are going to be. So let's look at how we can fill those into your Phase 1 document. In our previous video, we spoke about that we need to find 10 questions and the answers to those questions are going to help give us information and data to help guide our research aspect of this PAT project. These questions should almost be a continuation of our focus question as the focus question should then guide what these questions are going to be about. Because at the end of the day, our focus question is where all of our focus is going to be. And so the 10 questions can help refine what information we need to find. So for our 10 questions, we needed to find four different levels of questions. Level one being facts, definitions, who, when, where. Level two being why or how, a bit more descriptive, a bit more detailed, not just one word answers or simple answers. There's more of a discussion to level two questions. And level three and four are very similar. We're talking about predictions. We're talking about evaluations, recommendations. Those will be our level three and four questions. Just a reminder to go check out our five cat pad tips for your research. If you watch that video, you'll get some ideas of what you can look for in order to help find your level three and four questions. And then we need to have categories for our questions. They give us some examples like background, problem, consequences and solutions. So basically our questions need to be grouped according to some sort of theme or category. Each question shouldn't be its own category. We need to group a couple of questions together. Just a reminder, they talk here that in our phase three, these categories are going to be headings in our research aspect with our findings and our information. So we're going to talk about background and then our two or three questions that are related to that category are then going to be discussed. And then the next category will be another heading and then the other questions that relate to that particular category will then be discussed. So this is a way to group our questions into themes. So we want a nice diverse group of themes. We want something maybe on the background. What is the problem? What are the consequences of our solution? Try to stick to three categories. If you have to go to a fourth one, that's fine. And you're not limited to these categories. You can make up your own categories. Maybe you got one on predictions that talks about trends or future developments in the ethical use of AR, which is our topic for this year's PAT. You will obviously use categories that relate to your PAT, whichever year you are doing it in. If we go to our PAT document that we created and we use this table in Appendix B to lay out all this information. Now I've highlighted this section in blue because this section is actually divided up into three parts. We have the details that relate to the question. We've got the details that relate to the source of the information or the source of the answer to that question. And then we've actually got the answer to the question. So think of it as three groups details of the question, details about the answer and what the answer is. So we're going to focus just on the question. So this is all related to each other. We're going to write down your question. You're going to say what level it is and what category it is. So a type of question could be what are the different types of AI used in the medical sector? Remember, our focus question is focusing on a particular sector. So we want questions that relate to a particular sector. We don't just want general questions. We want questions that are going to help us have a discussion in our phase three. So this is a very factual question that's more likely to be a level one. So over here, we're going to indicate level one. And this is background information. So, and so I make it a category about the background information. It's nice to center our information. So that's all you need to fill out for your question. So that's one of them. Now you must do another question. What are the potential effects that AI use in the hospitals will have on patients in the future? Again, focusing on a particular sector that we are focusing on. This is obviously related to potential effects, what's happening in the future. So this is more predictive. So this is more likely to be a level three question. And maybe I've got a category called impact, which will be related to the impact of AI. Hopefully you've done your research so you have an idea of what your questions are because by doing your research you've got your answers then you can reverse gear your questions. You want to fill out all 10 questions. You want to make sure that you've got all the levels filled out and the categories filled out. You want to make sure that you've got a nice distribution of level ones and twos and threes. You don't want all level ones and all level twos. You want to make sure that you've got at least a couple of level ones, a couple of level twos and some threes and if so, maybe some fours. Remembering that you are probably going to be have more interesting discussions using your level three and four questions. So don't just do level ones. 
And then your categories, they can range from three to four different categories. Try to group your questions into themes and that will help guide you when you get to your phase three that you can talk about the theme. So we can talk about the background and look at the answers for all of our background category questions in the paragraph that will revolve around the background. Just a reminder that you could find a web source that answers a particular question, but that source also answers another question, which has a completely different level, which has a completely different category. That is possible. We did say in our previous video, you want to find three sources, maybe four that answer the questions. So you are looking at your sources to find out what your questions are going to be, which makes sense. If you think about it, you've got 10 questions. You've only got three sources at least. So therefore, some of those sources are going to have to answer multiple questions. So when you are doing your research, hopefully you found sources that can at least answer or give you about three questions here, three questions here, maybe four questions there. If you can't do that, then you're gonna need a fourth source to help you get those extra last few questions, unless you can find a great source that can answer, for example, maybe five questions. So go fill out your 10 questions, go fill out the question levels, go fill out the categories. And then in our next video, we're gonna be looking at how we record the information about the answers. Remember, all of this can't be done unless you've actually done the research and that you've actually found what the answers are. And that way you've reverse geared your questions. And then we can just talk about what the details of those answers are gonna be over here. So go do that part now. If we look at the rubric there, we can see the part for the questions. Are all the questions provided relevant to the topic? You'll get that mark. Are the questions represent at least three different levels? So if you've got at least three different levels, you're gonna get that mark. If we group them into different categories, we're gonna definitely get that mark. And there's at least three different categories groupings of questions. So the categories is actually two parts to that rubric. So if we've got all of them, then we're gonna get all four marks. And then we're on our way to maximizing all the marks for this pat. All our resources is on our YouTube channel at Miss Long IT and Cat. We also post on TikTok at Miss Long Education. If you follow those accounts, you will get the information you need to succeed at Cat and IT. So remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.